call the meeting to order. Chairman Judge Corn present, Commissioner Wardlaw, Commissioner Vasquez, Commissioner Edelton, Commissioner Flotis, and myself. We have a quorum. <coughs> so please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approving uh, minutes from the previous meetings. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. 5-0 vote. Citizens comments? I had none. Uh, subdivision flats. Good morning. Good morning. Commissioners, the Olympics of the Asian is proposed by South Texas Geomatics. That's a land surveying Martin Sherman Callahan. Uh, this property is owned by Riverview, Riverview Enterprises, and they are proposing to subdivide 52 uh, percent, 52 percent of uh, total 2,500 acres lot. They are subdividing within 17 lots. The smallest one is 32 and the largest one is 116. They are creating private roads following existing third roads paths. They are private. Uh, the county is not accepting any roads, street alley, ditches, bridges, culverts, or any other such facility within this subdivision for maintenance. Uh, they are also submitting the proposed restrictions and covenant for this subdivision. Uh, since all of the lots are greater than 10 acres, the subdivision is not falling into the county model subdivision rules. The, I'm presenting this for your approval. The, um, this item 6 on the covenants mm -hmm. says no structures of any kind, including gear blinds, feeders, shall be permitted within 100 feet of the property line. I believe state law requires no gear blinds within 300 feet of a property line. Okay. I know we have no authority so over covenants, but, but state law says you can't have a deer blind within 300 feet of your property line. Would that be a correction? I can't correct okay. it. They need to correct it. <coughs> we have no regulatory authority over restrictions, but those restrictions are in conflict with state law. I think law. that would be a good idea to protect each other there, the neighbors, you know. But I didn't even know stands so close to the fence line. But Commissioner Nettleton says it's correct that we don't have, the county oh. doesn't have authority over the covenants. Uh, so it's not like we can obligate them to change it, but what you're saying is maybe suggesting to them that they follow the law might be a good compromise. Okay. I would think if it's part of the state rules or regulations, they should uh, comply with it. But, I mean, whatever the court wants to do, I mean, we can table those out and bring them back when you get those corrections done. But if you know, yeah. we don't have authority to tell them to correct it. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. But maybe they don't know. <coughs> no, I would at least advise them. Maybe they can one, one, uh, one thing is the subdivision as the plan and the other yeah. Completely yeah. different is just the I would at least advise them they need to check into the laws on the distances for deer blinds and feeders, but it's 300 feet from an outside <coughs> fence line. Okay. 100 yards or 300 feet. 
Do you want to accept it? What do you want to do? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve it. Okay. Second. Second. Have, a motion, have a motion, Commissioner uh, Flores. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Certificates of compliance, sir? No. None. Monthly report by elected officials. Mm. Second. Have a motion, Commissioner Levitin. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Two <coughs> more bills. Mm. Second. A motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second by Commissioner Flores. Any discussion? Uh, nothing. All those in favor? Aye. 5-0 vote. Update on the status of the traveling Vietnam Wall. The wall heals Del Rio. Mr. Vitella, please. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Uh, booklet that we have. Um, my name is Flyer. This is um, the one you're running on Facebook? Or am yes. I just on Facebook? Yes, this one. We had uh, come up with a couple of ones before that one. Um, trying to find the best flyer. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, uh, I think that's the one that uh, we're going to stay with. There is another one that we're pushing, um, we're using with the city, um, we're um, communicating back and forth to get trans, uh, transit uh, for extra parking, and they are working with us um, in regards to picking up the veterans that don't have a ride, that are handicapped from old, from the uh, um, um, uh, I'm sorry, old folks homes, mm -hmm. nursing, homes. nursing homes, and uh, um, uh, they they'll provide that for us. So if if they call the the city, they can uh, they'll they'll pick them up. No questions asked. No no. Uh, uh, <coughs> will our will our van or vans be running that day? No, they will not. Not on Saturday. So I I spoke with them as well. They're going to give us two vans, and we're going to have our van. Okay. Um, that way it can be out there um, and, and pushing people back and forth to through if we need the overflow parking which I'm going to assume that we are overflow parking will be where it's going to be at the um, Moore Park uh -huh. where the slides are uh -huh. and um, it need be um, behind Joe Ramos uh -huh. Joe Ramos yes yes yeah, uh, that soccer field uh -huh. will be there as well. Uh, it will just be easier. It's a straight shot if it, from Moore Park to um, uh, to the to the field. Um, so we're working that out with them. They're going to give us signs and stuff like that. Um, the T-shirts that we decided to put out, um, we got three quotes. We're working on that. Um, and, and we, we finally dwindled it, dwindled it down, we dwindled down the price down okay. to. So we've got t-shirts, mm -hmm. uh, doing pencils on them, paper. Yes. Uh, well, the carbon one. paper is going to be provided by the museum, okay. and we, the only thing they're not providing is the pencils. Okay. Uh, security in uh, California visited with the sheriff and police department? Yes. Right? Yes. And then I've already contacted CDP. Um, they're going to be providing EMTs. Okay. Um, for for every day that we're out there. Okay. Uh, we need to put it out that you still need volunteers? We do. Um, we already set up a watch, so if they just call the office. Um, Telephone number is? Uh, seven, it's right behind seven, you. 7549. Hello. Give it to you. Hello. 774 7548 or 7549. What do you need volunteers for? What kind of work are you looking okay, for? Okay, so there, there are two types of volunteers that we're looking for. Um, we've already, we've pretty much um, got all the volunteers to set up the wall. Um, erecting the wall is going to be quite difficult. There's about 80 panels, um, and we're going to be moving them across the field. Um, that's going to be an all-day project. Um, so we need about um, 50 abled bodies, strong what bodies. What do they weigh? What does each panel weigh? Um, it, they're going to range from 50 to 80 pounds to 25 pounds, um, just because of the um, um, 
Yeah, the, the size of them. So at, at the at the apex, that's where they're the tallest, and then they they start um, tanning uh, or smaller. Um, and then the way that they are erected are is is the ceremonies um, way that you're supposed to handle the panels. Um, so that they're going to teach us all that on the day of. The bottom line is you still need volunteers. We do. We, 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 we have most of the volunteers um, from CBP and the National Guard that are going to help us put the wall up. But the, the, the second part of the volunteers are going to be keeping watch. So, um, so you reached out to the base? Yes, I reached out to the base. Do you need park lifts? Do you need skid steers? Do you no. need equipment? No, 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 no. We can't put equipment on the field, and we can't use equipment um, uh, setting up the wall. If they, their, their panels, they're, they're going to uh, be stretched out on a on a base, and then they get hammered into the grass. But we don't need any um, any equipment at all. We just need able bodies. It's all grunt work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what are we doing to advertise around the state so everybody knows? Okay. State? So yeah, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I just left Eagle Pass last week. I went and met with their um, local newspapers. So fellow down there. Um, I think there was four of them, four different newspapers that I spoke with, um, and we got the word out in Eagle Pass. I did the same thing in Sonora and Arizona. I reached out to their commissioners um, and as well as their judge um, and and Uvalde. We've already got uh, charters for high school buses um, scheduled to come to see the walk from Uvalde, Arizona and Eagle Pass. Um, they're going to be bringing juniors and seniors. Brackettville, Rock Springs? Uh, haven't, haven't got anything confirmed from Brackettville, Commissioner, but uh, we, we did reach out to them. What about anything with the San Antonio News outlets? I'm going to be having the TBC, um, the Texas Veterans Commission, um, their, uh, um, not photography team, but their, uh, their news team mm -hmm. that they have set up, they're going to be coming down and giving us um, broadcast for, uh, for our walk. Yeah. I, I guess. No more concerned like newspaper or yeah. TV. Yeah, just so they can, they can, you know, maybe if they can do something in the newspaper, San Antonio, or the TV stations, letting people know that it's going to be here. I so will the do people that. that want to come from San Antonio and surrounding areas have the ability to. I'll reach out to San Antonio. I didn't go that far. Mm -hmm. Um, San Antonio reaches, their, their, their news outlets reach a, a very large area around here, especially their, their TV shows. I mean, I their, their news outlet, you know, like. Channel 12 and 4 and 5 and stuff like that. Okay. And, and if you need help with that, let me know. I, okay. I have somebody that might be able to help you contact those people. It's not Karen. You know, we're yeah. going to have enough people to on each of those places if you need. Great. Contacts. That'd be great. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. I was just going to reach out to uh, my TVC people out there, but yeah, um, this is a lot closer. So that'd be great. That, that, that'd be really It'd be very helpful. Uh, how many volunteers do you still need to keep watch? Um, to keep and what, watch. And what does that entail? Okay, so keeping watch entails it's going to be a four-hour shift um, throughout the throughout the entire day. Once once it gets erected, it'll be available for viewing at uh, 12:01 a.m. on Thursday, the fifth. Um, at nighttime, we only need three people there. Uh, and what it entails is just being there for someone who needs to find. A name on the wall. Um, they're going to get every every single person who's going to uh, be volunteering. They're going to get trained on what the wall is, what it means, how many names are on the wall. Fifty-eight thousand three hundred and thirteen, I, I believe. Um, uh, how many members uh, from our community on there? We have nine. Um, Maverick County has ten. Um, if you were to say a number. Uh on volunteers that you would still need, what would that number be? Uh, 15, 20, 50? For, for, um, for keeping watch, mm -hmm. I would say about 100 slots okay. we need. Okay. Um, just because throughout the, throughout the busy of the day, throughout the, 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 the foot traffic of the day, when the kids are coming, 
um, which is going to be Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday, of course. Um, we're probably going to need six to eight people per four hours. Four hours. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, we could get the uh, Lions Club or the UCO members involved yes, in this. I've, and, yes, you know, I've already about. reached out to them, and I'm just waiting for them to call us and, and fill in the slot. Hey, I have this time available. And what about high school seniors? Oh, high school kids, they need service hours. Would they be? I've already reached out to the high school. I've already reached out to uh, also the college. I'm just waiting. So you're out there. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, we're just waiting for them to give us the call. So um, we, we just need someone to, to raise their hand and answer the call. That's it. Um, but we have it set up. Um, the only thing I haven't reached out to is San Antonio. Uh, but our rural communities have gotten taken care of. Uh, I think and there may be people from that area that would like to come volunteer too. Yes. Yeah. I know um, the VFW and um, the Elks Lodge as well. I've already reached out to all of them. Um, they said they're going to. We just haven't uh, locked a name down. <coughs> Because so. people have seen it, it's very impactful. It, it's a, I think it's a great accomplishment for our area. Yes, it definitely is. It is. This is a huge mm -hmm. um, event that's, that's going to be coming to Del Rio. Very, thank you again for your, your support. Um, it wouldn't have been able to be done without you all. So thank you so much. If, uh, Adrian, if you don't mind, I want to keep you on the agenda uh, every two weeks Roger. until this thing gets done. That way we keep, if, if we need to do something, we can actually get it done. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Judge. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> uh, item number 11, requesting funds for ink and paper for plotter. I had asked them to put this on there, actually. Mm -hmm. we, we bought that new uh, plotter, and now we're going to need the ink and stuff. How much you told me, but I forgot. Okay, we need six cartridges, and each one is like $120. And how many times in here? So how much money? Do I, I expect to have uh, two sets of uh, the complete set of inks within one year. So that's... And they last like five years, so if we don't use the paper. Uh, and we have we're uh, intending to to get if we satisfy four rolls. if we set aside twenty four hundred dollars would that be enough or what's yes. the dollar amount? Mm -hmm. That'll be enough for the two sets of cartridges. And yes, sir. Okay. Motion to set aside uh, to add uh, twenty five hundred dollars to uh, the county engineering out of uh, contingency. contingency. Second. A uh, motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? <coughs> five zero vote. I want to thank you all for. The for your support in that. Yeah. that painter. No, thank you. <laughs> it's like Alexa. <laughs> uh, Aaron, treasurer. No, no report. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move to item 44. If y'all don't mind, we have people sitting there trying to get back to work. We're going to go through uh, 44, 45, and 46, and then we'll come back. <coughs> item 44. Approval lease agreement between Valverde County and Del Rio Little League. Second. And a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Five zero vote. Lease agreement between Valverde County and George Paul Memorial Bull Riding. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. I have a motion, <laughs> Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Five zero vote. Lease agreement between Valverde County and the Rotary, Del Rio, Texas. Mm -hmm. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flores. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. Item 45, approval of the final draft for the fairground stall use agreement and provide effective date. Uh, Edgar. <coughs> Morning, Judge Commissioner. Right. Bringing this back again, same one from last time. Uh, uh, I've been speaking to or some of the renters out of the programs have been, you know, very unhappy about the outrageous amount of uh, rent that they want to charge. Okay, but this one right now says 30. Yes, 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. So but they're okay with all the services we provide for them. I'm sorry? They're okay with all the services we provide for them, yes, 25 sir. bucks or 30 bucks a month? Mm -hmm. 
commissioner that, well, that, that they said let's get, outrageous. We have a motion yeah. real quick, and then we'll have discussion. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Take off. I have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second, Commissioner uh, Vasquez. Any discussions? I mean, I, I still have an issue with this. I mean, you're you're you're, you're raising it from twenty-five to thirty bucks. You're raising it five dollars, but our cost <laughs> to deal with this is a lot more money. You're not going to. I can't even rent a storage building for thirty bucks a month. Right. Um, and in a storage building, there's no services provided. We provide cleanup. We go pick up their stuff. We have to deal with their issues. We have electrical electrical issues. We have repairs on the building. We have a lot of stuff for thirty bucks a month. It is too cheap. Uh, we don't we don't provide electricity to the stalls. Uh, that, that's something we don't provide. Uh, the only thing we do. You don't have lighting around there. You know, street lighting and stuff like that. Well, yeah, okay, for the safety good. of. Uh, uh, but I mean, thirty bucks is too cheap. It, it costs us more than that to manage and maintain this thing. These fees should be a lot more expensive. Right. I mean, uh, I, 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 I've said that since the beginning, I, and I continue to say that if we can't afford to, uh, you know, there's people that, that run businesses. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on out there. But. Mr. Murdoch, do you want to say something? Before, before if you, if you don't mind, that way we can get you on, get you on the mic. As far as, as far as the rate goes, I'm Jim Mark Butler. As far as the rate goes, I know it's a minor adjustment of $5 a month. But currently, I mean, for what the condition of the stalls and what's out there, that's what we felt as the committee the committee felt was comfortable to go with. Is it too cheap? Yeah, over time, yes. But with the current conditions of the property, that's what we felt comfortable bringing to y'all. As far as the cost, y'all have the lighting and stuff, whether there's a horse out there or not, you're still going to have those costs because you're going to have to have some security out there because you've got property in buildings. So as a committee, you know, we I pitched a higher amount as a committee. We came back to thirty dollars for what we agreed that we're comfortable with. How, how are we supposed to improve it if we don't have the revenue to? Well, that's another thing. We y'all have the proposal from the architectural firm, and you know, moving forward, these things will change. But with current conditions, that's where we left it at. And I know y'all have at some point the architects, I presume, are going to be asked back in to present formally what y'all kind of been given in for, mm -hmm. and uh, discuss that. There's a, which, you know, to that point, I feel what we presented y'all with covers a lot of bases and it covers a lot of different uh, well, I mean, the most, the, There's a lot of stuff in here that's good. I, I'm not just, well, I just have an issue with the, 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 the well, I agree amount with that. that we're charging. But I, I couldn't go rent a horse stall anywhere else in the state of Texas for that kind of money. Nah, not even in, 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 in any kind of condition. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. The, a lot of, too, also that contract cleans up a lot of loose lands as far as uh, dead animals are handled, different things like that fees that are imposed when you move out, different things like that. cleans up a lot of loose ends that you don't currently, are not covered with the contract you have. It's so from that perspective, you, from that perspective you, get, yeah. you get more protection. Yeah. The money, money wise, you know, I said, it was our opinion as a group that for what the current condition of the stalls and the facility is out there, that was about as far as we were willing to push it for that. Mr. Murdoch, uh, any word to grade the stalls, what grade would you give or number? Kind of, you know, one to ten, about a three. Or really? Probably gonna put that my bad. horse in there. Yeah. Okay. If if we tear down the stalls and build new ones, then what would you recommend we charge? That'll be that would be something we'd have to discuss as a group when we get to that point. Because and that's all in that proposal. That e e each one of those stalls are rather expensive to build if we build the whole row of them. I mean, the time we. The, the cost to tear down what's there, put up new stalls and all that. I mean, a, a lot of what's in that proposal was just revamping some of the current buildings. I, might, I think there might have been two new buildings and re refurbishing some. Yeah, some cost. of them are going to have to be tore down simply because of what they're built out of. Yes. Some of the material, well, some of them are going to stay, but they're going to have to have roofs removed and replaced because there's some asbestos okay. material out there. We, uh, we have a, do you have any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a motion, Commissioner Wardlow? Can I speak on that? Yes, ma'am, if you want to. Good morning. Good morning. My name is uh, Jill Broyles, and I am a horse owner out there. I currently rent um, eight stalls, so that's $200 a month. Um, currently, I am renting as um, the stall only, meaning I am risking my horses, uh, you know, they're kind of like their life. Um, my horse has cut their eyes uh, a couple of times on the stalls, requiring stitches. 
I've had seen horses, their feet go underneath, and it depends on what stall you're in. My stall happens to be an all metal stall. They are small for horses. They are only a 10 by 10 stall, which is extremely small if you have a larger horse, okay? So when they lay down and they roll, their feet have the, um, uh, the potential to go under the metal. So when they pull it back out, there's three horses that I've known that almost slice their, um, their feet off. Now, as a horse owner, we take that as an inherent risk out there at the, the stables right now, and we pay those fees to have our horses bedded on our lawn. Um, I know, I think I had mentioned, I had heard, I think it was uh, you, Mr. Nettleton, where they had said that it's $80,000 to for the county to um, maintain the area out there, but they're not maintaining it just for the hall the, the stable people. They are maintaining it to have the events out there. They are maintaining it for the public safety as well. So I'm one of those that I can see $30 at right now, but anything higher, I don't think that would be right right now. Not for what the cost we're taking. Any improvements, any Thing that I do for my horses right now, I am out of pocket because their safety does come first. I understand. It, it goes with owning the horse. I, I have it, it, it. it does, yeah. but but I think I have heard you said that it's cost in the county right now eighty thousand dollars to maintain the fairgrounds. That is not just for us. Yeah, right. and I actually, I'm actually the one that made. Are you okay? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, so it's eighty thousand dollars above what we collect in rent. Yeah, so um, correct. And I they're, they're not, I yeah, you're not only maintaining it for, for us. You may, it's going to cost you whether you tear it down, make fields out of it, whatever that, that it is right now. Um, it's as far as with, you know, for the, the rider safety also, it comes in, you know, the ground up there is very uncaring. We're not asking for you to put sand in there and maintaining the grass or anything like that for us. Because when you go and cut the grass, my horses are saying, oh my God, I'd eat that up myself. <laughs> so, um, just take all that into consideration when you want to raise it, depending on how much you raise it. And, and for Mr. Nettleton, if I were to rent someplace other than the fairgrounds, I am paying a lot of times the where I'm renting it from, the people are um, saying, okay, we will feed your horse. There's turnout. There's blanket service. They're offering another service. No, no, well. I understand. It is not just strictly the, the stall and stuff like that. They maintain the flooring. They maintain everything well, and stuff like I that. Well, I will tell you that uh, in 2011, mm -hmm. when we started looking at this and, and bringing it back, <clears throat> average stall rent was somewhere around $75, $80 mm -hmm. for what we provide. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that that's where we need to go, right. but I'm just uh, coming back at what you just said. You know, our lowest rent that we could find out there was 75, 80 bucks, but then we went to 250, 500 dollars, and it does depend that's on what you have there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but we appreciate you, ma'am. What was your name again? I'm Jill Broyles. Okay. And like I said, I I don't run a business out there. I have rescued <coughs> four horses from the county, and that I'm maintaining the horses out there right now okay. that I have rescued. Um, a lot of my people that come and help me, we do it for a, a therapy type thing. There's no cost to it or anything. So I appreciate it if, you know, when it comes to the cost that remember the recreational rider, not just the ones that may, you know, have um, a business or, you know, race horses out there or something because I'm just, it's just me and my, my seven kids out there. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Any other discussion? We have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw, again. A second, Commissioner Vasquez, uh, to accept the agreement as it is right now. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I was thus, would you like Martin, that's this. Four. All those against? Aye. All right. This is a 4 1 vote. Commissioner Nettleton, oh, this is one. <laughs> What's the one? What's the one? Uh, 46. Approval to purchase grill guards and line eggs for the four new service trucks. Expense to be paid from parks building maintenance capital outlay fund in the amount of $6,391. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, motion, Commissioner Flores. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. Uh, money's there. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Five zero votes. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you. <coughs> Thirteen auditor report. Uh, 
You guys have been saying that. Commissioner, good morning. Any questions on the current motion? Any report? Excuse me. Excuse me. We're going to have a report. Motion to report. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. 5-0 vote. Item 14, contract for IDOC, professional services agreement, software licenses, and maintenance plan, $3,000 a year for a monthly support fee. For a monthly support fee, $250 for the 53rd Judicial District. Where does this come from? We can take out a contingency. Don't they have a tech fund? Don't they have something? There's a tech fund, but that would not facilitate this invoice. It was $1,200 balance. So they don't collect anything in the tech fund? Or they just spend it all? No, they do collect. It's real nominal. It's less than probably $50 a month. They don't have other funds over there? No, not that I'm aware of. So then we take it out of contingency? Or take $1,200 on the balance. Yeah, you want to take $1,200? Yeah, I'll take it. 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 Whatever they have in their tech fund and the remainder out of the two. Second. Okay. Is this, this is a new contract or is this a new adding to it. Okay. This is adding to in order for them to be able to do the same thing Judge Gonzalez does. Okay. It's the same thing Judge Gonzalez. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, Mr. Muskie's update on voter registration activities for upcoming elections. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Always a pleasure. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just uh, would like to update you uh, to, uh, as to the uh, some of the ideas and some of the uh, uh, action that we've taken to improve. Uh, our overall goal, of course, is to improve the accuracy of the information that our voter registrar lists and, and provide that more accurate information to to the community and to the um, the, the first thing we're going to do, and, and I've been working with our county clerk's office, uh, we're going to provide a voter registrar during early voting in the same building to, to have an ease of access to them. And if someone comes in and there's a correction needs to be made on their on their information, whether it be from a name to a precinct to their uh, their address, We'll have somebody on on site, and we can direct them there and and take care of the problem uh, in a in a in a quick and, and easy easy fashion. Um, we also uh, reached out to the Secretary of State and requested permission to have a voter registrar at uh, two voting locations during the day of, of voting. So, based. Uh, Based on their permission and, uh, and uh, them allowing us to do so, we'll have a voter registrar uh, clerk at uh, the two largest voting locations. And then the following election, we'll, we'll swap them out and put them in the, the other two locations. And we'll continue to do this until we, we clean up the rolls, basically, and, and, and get a, a higher accuracy. So I just wanted to let you all know that those are some of the ideas that we're working. Also posting on our website. Uh, was brought up to me uh, by uh, our county attorney. Said, "Problem, good idea, and absolutely." So I've gotten with the IT, and we we should uh, update our website to where there's a there's some links to to state information, uh, voter.com, that type of stuff, and then also the per, the process of how to get registered here locally. So we'll we'll have that as a, a splash or something on the, on the front of the web page. So during this time, we can we can uh, we can uh, have our um, constituents. Uh, go and I'd ask Mr. Muskie to to bring this before us. So we sat in a meeting last week, mm -hmm. right? The uh, executive election. <coughs> that one. That one. Uh, and, and these were ideas that he would, that him and Jane had come up with. He'd come up with, and Janie was like all excited about it. <coughs> it just seems like uh, it would be a no-brainer. To do it, I mean that way we have they don't have to be going into the other building looking for somebody. I mean they're actually going to be in the building where they're having the election. And you're in the, you know, <coughs> you have 
7 to 7. They'll be here 7 to 7 on the weekend. That we're open to, to vote. We'll do the same I, thing. I think it's a great idea. I know in the past, if you had a problem at the polling place, you had to drive all the way down to the courthouse, straighten it out, go all the way back <coughs> there. You know, it, it, it makes it difficult. And, mm -hmm. and and we do need to clean up the, 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 the voter list and make sure that we have accurate information. Right. So I, I think it's great. I'm yeah, glad so to see us doing this. With the voter registration cards that went out just recently, and I uh, uh, looked at the returns just because the wrong address. Uh, it's a lot of money, and it's a lot of returns. So that just tells me that, that it's about the accuracy is, is not 20, 30 percent yeah. comes back because it's of way too bad information. Way and, way and, and they need too to get, too much. They need to get uh, I've got a question. Uh, I know there's streets in the same name, in different precincts. One might be Water Drive, the other might be Water Street. Right. Exactly. Yeah. On stuff okay. like that. We, think, and that's part of that's part of what we need to to yeah. Cause we it, need it, to uh, call them, let straighten it out. Yeah. Because the Water Street, Water Drive, and, and it's the same street. It just somebody else put Drive instead of Street or Boulevard instead yeah. of Avenue or something like that. Yeah. So. I'm just curious once you get it cleaned up because I think we have 27,000 something registered voters according to the list. Mm -hmm. How many we actually have that are still living here, or that are still alive, or that, you know? Well, once I we get, agree. I understand this isn't going to happen overnight. I, say, I but, think you know, we'll try to deal with my dead people. Right. I'm putting the streets in the cemetery. It'll be a. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this will be ongoing, and we'll try to coordinate our efforts uh, when the census uh, people are taking it as well to see if we can't collaborate with, in, in a way, with, with the census as well to, to, to get as, as accurate information as we can. I'm glad to see we're doing so. Good job. And Mr. Thank Thank you. Just, just a reminder that if you want to vote in the primary, you have to register to vote by February. February the third. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Edgar, please uh, update on animal uh, control facility. I know y'all have done a lot of work, and it's really getting close. Yes, sir. So right now we're on the final stages. I mean, the, the details what takes longest. The guys were out there yesterday putting the water line. Uh, today they'll hook up at the women's shop. <coughs> and um, everything inside, just uh, the uh, water heater. We're going to wait for the base to install it and, and run those lines to it. And then I think we're going to go, we're going to get prices on fencing? Yes. Uh, for the outside, so everything's one, already been put in? I had one guy go out there yesterday. He's going to give me okay. a quote sometime this week. And then. And we'd already set aside money to, to finish that. I think the. I mean, that, here at some point, I mean, basically it's just going to be painting the floor, and that's what the inspector wanted. Yes. Yeah. So uh, where are we right? at on hiring people to actually do <coughs> sure. something with us? Yes. Sure. You got a minute? Yes. Come on up. Excuse me. What, what is it about the base for the water heater? What were they? No, it's just they got to put a base and then set the water heater, so they're working on the base before they can set the, set the they, water They require it to be so far off the ground, yeah. so you have like a little metal stand that's so tall. Because, you know, people ask good questions, and oh, I don't understand oh, no. what's going on. Yeah. And one of the other deals that when, when the sheriff had had that inspector, that lady come out from the state, their main concern was is that we painted the floor and sealed the floor that way it wasn't porous, but we don't want to do that until after everything gets done. I think the garage doors are in, the doors are in, and the electrical's done. Uh, pretty much, I mean, we're at the point now that we're probably going to end up painting the floors here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, Commissioner Nettleton asked the question. Uh, hiring. So where are we at on getting people hired? I mean, we can build this thing, but we don't have people picking up dogs and dealing with it. We're kind of. I've got three people out. that I've interviewed so far. And I'm just kind of waiting for item number 17 to come up. Why are we waiting for item number 17? I thought we already budgeted position. We have uh, two other positions budgeted. I still don't have a vehicle. That's been ordered. I'm waiting okay. on it. To I'm just fixing to get up and ask him. Uh, the vehicle? We ordered a vehicle for animal control that we budgeted. That's probably out. Sorry, I just threw you right under the yeah. bus. <laughs> 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 Welcome to Howard County. Think on your feet. <laughs> Can you maybe make a phone call and get back with us here in a minute? Yes. Call upstairs if you don't mind, sir. That unit includes the cage, <coughs> and I'm assuming we, we, we had nothing to do with the order of that unit. Uh, I think we put some, some quotes together. So, and I thank 
uh, purchasing is the one that uh, or that unit. Chuck was complete. Yes, go okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chuck was complete. Now, what about training for these employees? Because there's certain training I got to have and cert certifications and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, we have they, all have, they all have their basic animal control training. Three out of the four. Well, so they already train. Yes. Okay. They all, they're all certified. Yeah. Without giving yeah. too much information. Yeah. Yes. Now, are you going to bring us a... Um, the schedule of how you're going to deal with these employees because I mean you got days and nights and I mean there's all kinds of stuff. So so initially, uh, uh, once we get everybody on staff, it's going to be it's going to be hard for one person for if number 17 is approved. No no I, we had this conversation when we started this yes. and I told everybody yes. that one person wasn't going to do it. Yes so, so what I'm going to do I'm going to send initially I'm going to send. Uh, in March, I'm going to send two deputies to school. So when this individual is off, at least they can handle it if it's on their shift, if it's night. Okay, but if we, if we approve the, the, the additional employees, yes, sir. then you will have, I don't know how many were three. Three. There's three. Okay. Three on top of the one we already have, or two? No, you'll have three. A total of three. three. Okay, so adding two more. Then you would have enough to be able to work shift work, or no? No. So you're going to have to set up. How are you going to deal with it at nights and weekends? And so, so at nights, I'm going to I'm going to send. Come March, I'm going to send two people to the basic animal control training in San Antonio, and I'm going to. So we're going to pull deputies off the street to go do animal control. Yes, one deputy off each shift will be trained in that, so at least they can. Respond. So then, how many people do you need to do this right? <laughs> By <laughs> about seven or eight. But for right now, seven I think. Or eight. Eight. What do you need, seven or eight? Yeah. So the the PCA is 12 hour shift. Okay, so, so just to give an example, Commissioner, over the weekend we got a call uh, on some cats. So right now I have a deputy uh, once a day going to feed 30 to 40 cats. Um, oh, I, I, I know what we're fixing to get into, but I'm yes. trying to figure out is how we're going to set it up to make it work. Yeah. I understand we can't afford eight. But we're going to continue to spend money on this to get to wherever it is that we got to get to to function correctly. Uh, I'm not convinced eight. I think that seems a little excessive, but I don't know. Um, but it's the animal control part first that's going to take a long time before. Uh, if I may, I think when you start little and then grow as we need to. I think the day shift people and being caught on call, anything comes up at night. The busiest part of your responsibility there will be during the day. Uh, At night, uh, you're asleep and the doctor's asleep and everybody's asleep. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't have to be as busy as the <laughs> day. Uh, the dog ain't asleep. Dogs are yeah. They're a lot of them. I mean, yeah. No, and, and, and I agree. I mean, it's one I of think three. It's just no, 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 we can't. This, no, this is, we, need, we need to start no, someplace. I, I understand yeah, we need to start someplace, but we also have to plan for the long term. You know, you. you and this, you is your have, this is your conversation. Yeah, this is yeah. where you say it's going to cost me more, and I yes. told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want us to understand where we're headed at some point. I understand what we're going to do, and I understand we have to do this, and I understand it needs to get done and all that. But we also have budgets that we have to plan for, and this is going to require additional employees. This is going to require additional space, additional vehicles, additional fuel, additional all the other pieces that go with this that we need to start planning for at some point. Doesn't mean we're going to do it today, but at some point we need to start planning for this. Yes, sir. An additional aspirin. But, <laughs> um, but the way uh, we had talked about, Sheriff, is if you wanted to do everything that everybody wants you to do, it's going to be a huge department. So when, when you look at the ordinances, you're going to start with the basics, right? And then if, if the court gives you money and resources, then you can start growing from there. We're going to take the most essential out of that policy that was put together. Mm -hmm. Because it is a lot, a lot of work. I think three people, our employees, is, is more than enough for right now. Mm -hmm. And if you need more, then you bring to the attention of the court, and, and, and we'll look at it. We'll so we can't start with 10 and, and, you know, not be able to afford that department because on all the money on payroll. Well, we can, we can do is give Commissioner Flores' phone number to the people that... Yeah, <laughs> sure. I can assure you the day you open it, you will get hundreds and hundreds of phone calls, and we will pick up hundreds and hundreds of dogs the first 30 days. 
And, you know, it needs to be said, so I can get the phone calls later. This is an animal control. It's not going to be a shelter. We will, we will wand them to make sure they're not chipped. Uh, if we need the space, uh, the days that we are mandated to hold that, that animal will hold. But if we need the space, then we'll need to do something in order to bring in more. But this is an animal control, not a shelter. We will do everything possible to make sure that if there's somebody out there that wants that dog, uh, that they, they have an opportunity to get him within the four days. But if we need the space, uh, it is what it is. Judge, yes, uh, one of the things that we have talked about is it's not just animal control, but some, sometimes you have dead animals that need to be picked up and stuff. And in the past, uh, the, the precinct road crews were assisting with that. So is that still a possibility? Well, that's going to be something that we'll work through later on. I mean, right now I put this item on the agenda because people were asking, are, are you almost done? With the facility? Are you almost done with, uh, with the statue? Are you almost done with the rules? Uh, the question is on the facility. Uh, I would think that we'd probably ask for an inspection maybe sometime mid February and get the state down here sometime mid February uh, to figure out if there's anything else that we need to do between now and then. Uh, we need to sit down, and I would say the three of us need to sit down, and any other commissioner that wants to sit in on a meeting and, and come up with, uh, with the rules uh, in order to bring it back to the court for approval. <coughs> Uh, we have two pieces of paper that are good starting points. Uh, the first one was the old one. The second one is the one that you have given to us. Uh, but those are good starting points. Uh, but those will need to be done before we get the inspection in February and brought back to the court. They did. We can do it. Well, no, no, it's not that. It's, it's just that the old one required the participation of the health department. So. That's what I'm saying. They're just starting points. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just starting points. Uh, but they're, I think both of them are good. Both of them are good pieces of paper. Both documents and, and the place to start. And at some point, I mean, they might be sitting. They might sit in with us also. I mean, it's it's, it's not a bad idea. Because of the rabies part of it, mm -hmm. you know, you need the health department involved. It's a good idea. Four of us. Then. That was. Any other questions, commissioners? Um, so the, the vehicle will be here at the end of the month at their facility, uh -huh. and it should be delivered to us uh, mid February. There you go. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Seventeen budget adjustment, budget amendment, and adding a deputy for animal control. But when I put this on. Uh, it would be animal control, and then I think we also have, sir, we also have, we have animal control, and also we have issues with uh, vehicles. When you'd come to us, I mean, if, if he's not doing animal control, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be a full-time job, but if he's not doing animal control, then we're going to need help on vehicles that are in the right-of-way. Okay. Would that be possible? It would be stretching it. But we'll no, see I mean, it's just, we do what we can do. Uh, I think we had an instance or an incident the other day where that dog got shot uh, out on Hamilton. Uh, that was one of the things that prompted me to put this on there. I, I just, you know, I'll be real honest with you. I mean, I've shot dogs that were eating our goats and stuff like that, but this one out there just to go shoot the damn thing on the side of the road was a little excessive. Yes, sir. Especially when you have people trying to, to bring it up and then. Uh, we're sitting here as a court having to deal with somebody else's, I'm not going to say it, somebody else's shit. Uh, it's not right. So we need to do something about it. All right. Matt, if the court, before we get into, we're doing it, not doing it, money, uh, do we have, uh, since there's positions in payroll that comes out of the general fund, would it be possible to fund a position if the court wants to, set up another position out of those funds that have not been utilized. We got through the calculation on that. We can see it's roughly going to cost about $38,000 for this deputy. 37 plus 21 percent. 37 plus 21 percent. Then you have to add the 75 uh, percent of the health insurance is about 6,000. So 75 percent of that. So mm -hmm. we're roughly around 38,000. 38? Mm, correct. That's about 44. Year. 44? It would have been 44 if it's a full year, but it's not a full okay. year, correct? Oh, yes. Okay. But I'm just saying. I mean, we'll have to. 
some point, I just want to make sure that everybody understands what we're doing. If we do the position, it's 37 plus French plus this, we're going to be around 44. But right now, since it's only, we've already eaten up three months or four months out of it, it'll right. be about 37 Correct. for this year until right. we go to budget something for the following year. How many current vacancies do we have in the sheriff's office? Actually, we're joining these right now for other positions to fill three slots. Uh, so you only have three vacancies right now? Three vacancies in patrol and two communications. And there's a standard unit this morning. So the money, we can take it out of that versus taking it out of contingency. Is what I'm not trying to get to. I'm trying not to have to take it out of contingency. Are we talking about one or two positions? One position, right? I thought we were talking about No, they have two already in the okay, budget. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. They have two already in the budget, that, but they're animal control officers. This would be a deputy that would be able to help and do nothing but animal control, investigate, and do, give tickets. And okay, but is he going to be an animal control, or is he going to be a deputy on the street? Because he's uh, the individual that he's looking at is certified for both. The deputy will be a deputy, and his primary responsibility is going to be animal control. Animal control. I just want to make sure he's going to be there, and we're not going to get tied up with something else. No. No. Okay. Got that on record, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll the the court, and just to be perfectly clear, we will have this position that we didn't have in next year's budget, so it will need to be funded. Uh, I don't know if uh, I would think we don't we fund it next year by not giving any elected official any raises. And well, that we'll, takes care of it. We can start talking about later. later. Hmm. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just because we are going to have to. Make no, we're going to have to. We're going to have to make those true. sacrifices mm -hmm. if we're going to 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 make this this department function correctly. We're going to have to make some big sacrifices. The question right. is, is do we have the money in payroll to cover this position without adding any more funds? I can't answer that right now. We've only been through three one quarter of the year. There may have been three slots. We don't know how long those have been open. And in addition to that, we will have uh, people that. Uh, what do we need? I, I guess my no question. With the organizations to let people. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess my question would be more: What do we normally wind up with that we don't use in payroll? Just kind of a normal. I know every year we have money left over that we don't use. Two to three hundred thousand. Okay. So I will make a motion to add a deputy position for animal control in the sheriff's office at the, uh, what was it then? It was, it's 37 yearly, but it's not going to so be. So it'd be a deputy one or what, I don't know how they, how do they classify that? The entry level is 36. <coughs> okay, 36 and an entry level position at 36 eight to come out of the current um, um, yes. general fund payroll. Second. Good. Okay. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second, Commissioner uh, Flores. All those in favor? I have All right. Five zero vote. Wow. I, I'm impressed. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you look back, uh, this is impressive. I'm going to quit right there. I don't want to cry. Oh, no. Contacts funds for uh, FRC Robotics Tournament. Set March 2020. It's called Kirsten, Texas. They're requesting $7,500. Motion to approve. Not a hot tax. Not a hot tax. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Hot tax money for air show, military affairs at $7,500 also. Uh, motion to approve. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. Commissioner uh, Flores, all those in favor? Uh -huh. okay. Five zero vote. Judge, do you have a date for that air show? No. March. Virtual. March 14th. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on in March. Uh -huh. It's going to be a big <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Adam Member to Amistad Zoning. Uh, Mr. Vasquez. Richard Mr. Hernandez. Richard Hernandez. Yes, Appoint Richard Hernandez. Uh, is that a motion? Motion. Okay. I have a motion, Commissioner Vasquez. Second, Commissioner Wardlaw. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Item twenty one. Uh, purchase property on 509 East Gibbs and five ten Converse Street at a cost of two hundred twenty thousand plus closing costs. Money to come. Well, I put contingency, but there's other places we can get it from. Uh, before we get into this, Commissioner. <coughs> 
just want the public to understand that we're just not uh, I'm just not out here trying to spend money and spend money and spend money. Uh, we actually spoke two weeks ago with the auditor, trying to make sure that our uh, our reoccurring expenses, whether it be the SE Ranch or whatever, that those funds would be covered with the, the tax rate that we have in place right now. Uh, we don't want to be spending money that that we're going to need next year, uh, and then have to raise the tax rate. So. In visiting with uh, the auditor, uh, our payment on the SC Ranch is a little under 400. A little, yeah, a little under 400 this year. We had 400,000 budgeted. There was about 85,000 dollars there in savings. Next year is going to be about 560 some odd thousand. Uh, so uh, we should have the money there to be able to make that payment without raising the, the tax rate. Uh, in saying that. When you say in savings, are you talking about savings? Because we're not be paying lease and rent and that kind of stuff. Or? Well, I'm, I'm fixing to get into that on the building. On the building itself, on what we're paying rental, uh, probably about 40000 a year is what we, we'd be saving in moving some of these uh, some of these uh, departments over there. Uh, we have had uh, probably the auditor and the treasurer that have uh, probably since the 60s, right, have we been paying rent. 60s, 70s that we've been paying rent on. So, and in this building here, I mean, it'll be up to the court. But you know, if we were to move auditor, treasurer, uh, IT, and purchasing over there, uh, and try to get them all in, in one area, one-stop shopping type deal, the we had visited on the purchase price. Instead of hitting contingency with with that purchase price, try to come up with some other ways of doing it. Uh, I think one of the ways was uh, maybe we had set up an account on the pins, the fees on the pins, and that money was set up to reimburse ourselves when we did the purchase on the property plus the railroad tracks. We never did, uh, we never did reimburse ourselves. The money just stayed there. So if we were to pull, like there's like 150 some odd thousand dollars there. Okay, 168. If we were to pull 120, 120, 125 from there, and then uh, pull the rest of it from contingency, uh, and and just in full disclosure here, if we do this, there's another item on there that you need to set aside another sixty-five thousand dollars to remodel it inside. So it would be a total cost of uh, two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. If you look at the building, the building's about sixty-four hundred square feet. It comes out, I think, after we remodel it, uh, $44 a foot in cost, what we have in it. Uh, other monies, you know, I was real concerned in bringing this to y'all because if, if we hit contingency and this and that, and then if we have an, an oh, oh, oh moment uh, and we need money from contingency, how we, you know, what are we going to do? Uh, in saying that, we have not reimbursed ourselves for. Uh, for legal expenses that we had on that, that needs to come back into our, our general fund that we paid out of our general fund. Uh, this is going to be a little over a hundred thousand. So, uh, I mean, the money would be there. I, I think we could build our contingency back up uh, a little bit. And uh, but it's up to the courts again. I just don't want the general public to think that I'm putting this thing on because I just we're just spending money. I believe that if we were to buy this building. Uh, the money that we spent in rent over the last 40 years uh, and what we're going to spend in the future just makes sense. But it is a uh, it we is about 40, which was right around 40 a year on the offices that we have right now. Joe, is this still, is this still a government building? Or no, it never was a government building. It's privately owned. Uh, the CAD has it at uh, between both both properties. The one on uh, Converse. And the one on Gibbs, the one on Converse is that green fence uh, that's in the back of the lot. Uh, the building and the little lot in front is the one on Gibbs. Uh, CAD has it at, I think, a little over 350 some odd thousand dollars value. So we're getting both, both. sir. We're getting both. But no, the lot in the back. The lot in the back, the building. Uh, what is what has a green fence around it and the building? Uh, and like I say, the CAD has it at 350 some odd thousand dollars for both. Uh, there's enough parking for everything. It's already handicapped. It has restrooms. I mean, all we need to do is go in there and take out the carpet and uh, put flooring and then paint it. Uh, we've already had uh, auditor purchasing 
treasurer and IT. Everybody's already gone to go look at the building. And Commissioner Flotis had already gone also, since he was the one in charge of buildings. And they're, they said it'll work. But it worked, yeah. Can we take, I mean, I'm sitting here adding up this agenda. Mm -hmm. We're about $340,000 on fixing this thing. Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> agenda wide. Um, how do we, if we're going to take these out of contingency and stuff, then the savings that we get in the future on the rent, we can reimburse back into a little. Reimburse back into contingency in future years? I just price. If you're if you're dwindling your beginning cash balance, you have to reimburse your beginning cash balance. Your next option is is you go out and issue a tax note and use the savings to pay the tax note. Okay. Because what's going to happen is we're going to spend the money, save the forty, and then it's going to get eat up somewhere else. And I think I'm pretty sure where it's going to get eat up. But um, kids, yeah. So we have to we we, we have to plan. figure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking, you know, I'm just adding up here in this, this agenda. We're about $340,000 we're fixing to spend. That is correct. Yes. Um, where are we going to find the money to do that now? I understand there's a money coming back later. We're going to have a savings. There's money. The, 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 numbers, the numbers make sense later. I mean, I get where we're headed, but where are we going to get the money today? If we if we spend it out of contingency, 340 plus whatever we've already spent, I don't know what's in there now. Mm -hmm. I know there's other funds out there that are available that are still owed back to the general fund mm -hmm. that we have not brought back to the general fund. Correct. Do you have an idea about what those amounts are? Uh, roughly 100 legal expenses. Um, in your USDA pens, whatever you want to use from there, you can go up to 170. Go up to 170, and then, of course, that comes in at 1800 a month. I'm, so I'm talking about these other departments that owe the general fund. The other departments that owe the general fund. If, if they're okay. Let's just, for the sake of just throwing it on the table. Uh, yeah. If we were to go through, okay, if we were to go through and look at, which we'd already talked about, we talked with Ms. Damon at one point, and some of the funds that were there, mm -hmm. uh, that those dollar amounts were going to be somewhere in the couple hundred thousand dollar range is what we'd looked at. Not for that office alone, no. No? no. And that so, would be special revenue as well. It wouldn't just be plain old general revenue. It would be dedicated to a special purpose. It just wasn't uh, divided up properly. Okay. So. But that money would come back in and we'd be able to use it for other, for dedicated purposes, which Correct. we've not been able to do that. Right? Right. It's been for the general fund money that we are now currently paying for those dedicated services. Yes. Correct. That is correct. <laughs> and then uh, tax office. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know how much. I don't know. I have not looked into it yet. And we're about to get busy, but we will be in there okay. hopefully in May. What do we have in contingency right now? 390. And then we had 100 and, what did you say? In, in, on 170. We need to mention another one. Yeah, the uh, attorney. Approximately 100. So then that would basically leave us 270000 in contingency. Correct. Right? Yes. Yeah. There's a little bit left over. Yeah. And worst case scenario, I mean, Commissioner, I will tell you that, that two weeks ago when we met, I mean, we, you know, I'd hate to have an old, old, old moment without mm -hmm. discussing mm -hmm. and then not having the money. So our... Our discussion was when I asked Matt that if I if I bring it to the court, they decide to do it. What happens if if if, if I have a moment and now I need that money back in order to to go do something that we didn't have planned, a disaster, something. So we had the two the two seventy. And then we have an IT fund right now that nobody's touched that has another four hundred thousand dollars in it. And that's just laying everything on the table. Uh, so there's still funds there, and I know he's smiling now because he didn't want to say that. But no. it is what it is. Everybody, in the, right about, I'm, a, I, I'm not real good about secrets. Uh, you know, uh, what a secret? Let nobody tell me. Uh, but so there's funds there. Do we know that we're planning on doing other things with that money, with the IT money? It'll have to come back for the court if we have a breakage. 
uh, you know, uh, we were talking about servers, uh, but there's, there's, if, if all of them were to go bad, which that hopefully won't happen, but end so of life, we should, we should be okay. Sir? So we just spend insurance money. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we, if we do a tax note to purchase this, would the 40000 in savings be enough to make the payment on? What would be the goal on the tax note, though? I mean, if we have so the we cash, have to take money out of it. Right. If we have the cash, we have a proper fund balance. That's great. If we do the tax note, we're going to encumber legal fees. We're going to encumber accounting fees. I understand fees, that, that but if you have that moment where we get into a disaster in the middle of July mm -hmm. <laughs> and you need funds. If there's an absolute disaster and it's an outright emergency, then you have the power to um, uh, do an emergency amendment to the budget where we can tap that fund balance. Okay. I just want to make sure that in a position we can have a panic attack over there. <laughs> uh, we tried to, and, and I want to tell you, Commissioner, we've done it two weeks ago when we met, we've been visiting with this. I mean, you know, like, like I told him, I'm working on a, on a three year, three more years. I mean, so I, if I leave, I, I want to make sure that we leave it in better shape than what we bought it or that we, we came into it with. Uh, so you know, it isn't that we're just not trying to spend money. I mean, you know, there's, there's, there's reasoning behind it. We'll make sure that something happens, there's still money there to cover it. Well, I mean, I think rent is a, is a waste of money, so I mean, we need to try to get people into our own facilities so that we can do things that we need to be done. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Some motion to, uh, to purchase it. Purchase it, yes, sir. Uh, motion, Commissioner Vasquez. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? All right. All right. Abstain. No, it's property of one of my family members. It's a 4-0 vote and one abstention, Commissioner Ward, will abstain. That's Judge, pretty cool. I, yeah, I just want to commend you all for looking at the funds the way you did across the board instead of just looking at one fund. I think that that shows really good financial planning. Well, and, and I'll tell you uh, in answer to that, uh, I've said all along that this is the only time that we've ever had a court with everybody up here being self-employed. Uh, I really believe, and I'm not endorsing anybody because we know I can't tell you how to vote or who I voted for. <laughs> but uh, it's, again, not not a, it's not an endorsement. <laughs> but I will tell you, it's, it's, it's really impressive. I mean, I don't, I, you know, we have people sitting out here, but I, I don't think everybody realizes what we've done last year and, and what we're doing this year. I mean, we're moving forward to trying to keep the tax rate at the same which we did it last year, and it looks like we're going to be able to do it this year. It just isn't a matter of, you know, let's go do this right now, and then we'll figure it out later. And Everybody's it's, coming up with a plan. But it's refreshing to see that you're looking at all the money that's out Everybody. there and looking at the possibilities. Yeah, just not used to compliment something. Thank you. <laughs> I was lying. I made it all up. I'll take it all back. No, no, we'll take it. Court will take it. Let's go spend more money. Yes. <laughs> Item 22, set aside $65,000 for flooring and painting on 509 East Kids. Mm -hmm. I have a motion, Commissioner Vasquez, second. second. Commissioner Nettleton, all those in favor? 5-0 yeah. vote. Accept portable building as a donation to the county. And again, we've got item 24 coming up. There's another $35,000 spent. Uh, this building is from the hospital, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All and those this will go to the fairgrounds. Going to the fairgrounds. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. Set aside thirty-five thousand dollars new portable building to the fairgrounds. Move. Have a motion, second. Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, Twenty-five pledge in the amount of twenty-five hundred dollars for industrial. Industry cluster study for Middle Rio Grande Workforce Solution. Mm -hmm. Middle Rio Grande is paying for a study to see what type of businesses we could bring into our county. It's a $70,000 study. They're willing to pay $35,000 of it. If y'all would uh, approve this at $2,500, I'll take it out of my um, my account, the judge's account. Motion to approve. <laughs> have a motion, Commissioner Flores. <laughs> Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Five zero. Take y'all long to spend my twenty five hundred. <laughs>
permit the use of the county library by the Middle Rio Grande Development Council to host information services to the elderly, their family members, and caregivers. I have a motion, Commissioner uh, Vasquez. All, uh, second? Second. Second, Commissioner Wardlow. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0 vote. Item 27, consideration and approval for the payment of $43,218.96 to Dunham-Bomb Engineering Corporation for completing new set of plans on Frontera Road Project for re-advertising and rebidding initial estimate. Initial estimate of this was $95,000. Uh, there's going to, uh, Carlos is going to probably do around $21,000 of it in-house. Uh, and I think, uh, I don't think, Tom and Carlos actually visited with Dun & Bomb. They knocked off another thirty some one thousand uh, dollars One of their invoices, or they wanted to charge us $950 for CDs. And I think Tom told them he'd send them 100 on them, don't worry about it. So they knocked off the 950 Yes, sir. Uh, Judge, I'd just like to say that the fees involved here are to uh, update plans and resubmit to TxDOT. Uh, Rebid project would cost $17,702.72 and update plans for $24,151.20. That will give you $43,218.96. I'll make a motion to approve this. Thank you. I have a motion, Commissioner uh, Flores, second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? No. Five zero vote. Uh, requesting qualification for proposal. Uh, the professional services associated with preparing various grant applications and subsequent program management if an award is made regarding available fund streams for 2020, 2021, an appointment of committee to score the poll. Mm. Check. Need a committee? Um, what is our last committee? We, we need the purchasing agent, the auditor, and then somebody, Tom? Or, who could do Tom. Tom. that enough? That's okay. That's uh, part of your motion, Commissioner? Yes. Uh, second, accept. Okay. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Yes. Five zero vote. Start process to accept an additional $1 million for self help center. Uh, we were informed last week that there are self, seven self help centers in the state of Texas. Our self help center here is what they're using as a template for the other six. Uh, this million dollars is above what they have already awarded us. Uh, it's money that other self-helps have not uh, managed to hit their thresholds. So they are uh, they are offering it to us as soon as we do the paperwork. Motion to approve. Okay. They're doing a great job out there. Judge, I got a question here. Yes, sir. Uh, this one million dollars that's going to be spent on, on what kind of? Uh, they, they, they'll follow the same template that they had before. The housing and all. Everything. Yes. Okay. Uh, there's no change to it. There's just more money being awarded more, to our yeah. town. Okay, great. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Yeah. Uh, five zero vote. Requesting for payment number eleven under SHC contract number seven two one seven zero one three in the amount of fifty six thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars and twenty eight cents. An authorized county judge and county auditor to sign request. Public services. Draw checklist and residential rehabilitation draw checklist. Move. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Are y'all okay or will you take a break? No. Y'all good? good? Okay. okay. Item 31 allow, allowing employee payroll deduction for property taxes. Judge, I put this on there. I've been visiting with Roy. Uh, the school district currently allows their employees. They have a process of, of how they can do payroll deductions for property taxes for their homes. I'd like to see us do the same thing and offer that to our employees. Uh, Roy had given me a list of what the school district requires. I think if we follow the same guidelines with our, our, our employees, um, it would be a, an opportunity for our employees to be able to not have to worry so much about their taxes all at once and be able to deal with it uh, all at once. So I will I will make a motion to allow payroll deductions and to follow the same process that the school district currently uses. I'll second that for discussion. Okay. I have a motion. I, got a question. I have a motion, Commissioner Nelton. I have a second, Commissioner Flotis. Any questions? This deduction will start in the first month of the year, right, January? 
and maybe the taxes are not due until October. <coughs> so uh, by that said, are we going to give our employees a, a discount for paying ahead of time? Well, they're going to get the same process well, that anybody you know, else would get. Because they're, they're, they're paying ahead of time. So well, they're, I think the, their the money should earn a little interest the, or they, money. They, We currently offer a 3% discount if you pay in October. So if, they, if, if those are paid in October, there's a 3% discount. And if you pay early, you don't get an interest. So what you're asking is well, yeah, you're if saying, the employees you know, are paying ahead, they should get some kind of numbers, but we don't. I don't know. We put all our employees together. If the month of January, they're going to pay, let's say, $20,000. Uh -huh. Or maybe more. I don't know. Uh, you know, that's put a bit of money. It's, it's, in. It, there's no mechanism to reward you for paying no, or that, that was my question. Yeah. I mean, I was just wondering. The employee could open up a separate bank account and they can deposit that money into there and collect the interest okay. without the payroll deduction. They could. They could. Yeah. It would be the same thing. How many would the, they would get the interest? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. How many would? So, in other words, you don't want to have to mess with it. Yeah. <laughs> it would be something else to, to tag and for us to. I understand, but it's a benefit to our to employee. The to, if the school district can do it, surely we can accomplish it. But, uh, surely we can, but surely we don't have the staff that the school district does do it. Okay, and that, that was going to be my question. I think uh, it's a great idea, but I, I it, it is great, and, and that's great for some people. Cut the money aside, and they can do, but they can do that for the <coughs> bank right now. Okay, I got a question. Yes. Uh, if you have a mortgage, most mortgage companies will not. Uh, will not they, they want to collect the taxes and want to collect the interest. Well, you're, that's including your monthly payment. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just okay. making a statement. We'll get to the argument in a minute. What? So those people would have to. They wouldn't be part of this program. There, it would be. Yeah, yeah can't be. Yeah. So how many people? I mean, how do we know how many people are out there that would do it? And then what is going to be the cost to us to do it? Do we know? I mean, do you all going to need somebody else? How do we do it? How do we put this in place? Usually it goes through payroll. Right. Uh, human resources is probably the, the, the first step is to take a survey and see how many people employees are actually interested in the program. And based off of those numbers, I think uh, the uh, this is the process of school district. Be able to determine how much additional work that's So, in a nutshell, the county is actually developing an, an escrow account on behalf of the employees in the county. Today, the school district will set up based on an estimate for next year's taxes and collect over a, a 24 uh, pay periods. So, you know, 22, 20, depending on when they start the, the withdrawal. And they come in on the last day. They'll be here March. Uh, they'll be here, I'm sorry, this, at the end of this month? Mm -hmm. this January. January. And they will provide us, you know, drop the check and they'll provide us the list and they say, all these people paid a hit, give them credit, whatever the balance is due on February 1st, the, the, the property owner is, is liable for, you know, let's say they, they're off 10 bucks. It's $10 plus 10 percent penalty. I don't agree with that. I think you can turn it in a little earlier. Give, give, give well, you can do it in October. October little time, not, not, you know, half a day. To, yeah. to, but anyway, that's, okay. that's pretty much how it works. I think a lot of it would fall uh, on HR. We would need a letter signed by the employee saying they're authorizing that deduction to be through payroll. And then... Um, <coughs> Is it the one that's called it? Would have, they would have a start and an end. Um, right now, the way we do, if you look at the uh, United Way, we set up employees like that. They want to do $100 a year. We start it at $100, and then there's an end point, and the system will cut it off. Where the money's going to go, and it's going to be kept uh, back up. That would be the auditor's job. With, with, the, money, with the United Way, when it's deducted, <coughs> and then it's put in an account, who's responsible for paying it out? Auditor's office. Okay, so it would be us setting it up and getting it coordinated in the system and Tyler on the individual employee. <coughs> would would this be something that we could maybe look at to check how many employees would take it before we jump off? Ooh, and that's fine. This is, this is simply to start the discussion. But uh, I think part of your motion. 
I, I can make a motion. Uh, I will amend my motion to ask HR to do a send out a letter requesting how many people would participate if we provide this service. Um, Second accept. I think it's it's an opportunity for us to provide our employees with something that would be beneficial to them. We do it for everything else. You know, we, we, we have payroll deductions for right. United Way. We have payroll deductions for insurance. We have payroll deduct. We have a lot of different payroll deductions. Yeah. And, that's, okay. that's and, the, and, and I know you don't like to do payroll deductions. Because it requires no, the deduction is the easy part. Yeah. It's, it's the tracking the money on the back end, setting up the liability accounts. Mm -hmm. What happens when tax rate goes up, goes down? Then we have to square up those accounts. There's a death in the family. Whose money is it? There's a divorce. It, that's when it gets. That's just a lot. Yeah. We have a motion. We have a second. <laughs> That's why you make a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. <laughs> um, <laughs> the other, <laughs> Commissioner Nelson, the other thing uh, to the point of opening a bank account, if somebody were to open a bank account to set aside money for their taxes and something comes up, they're going to use well, that money for their taxes. Okay, you know, th this is simply an opportunity for us, our employees, to have a benefit to be able to make sure their property taxes are paid. It, it, it's a simple thing. It, it's not complicated. Yeah. It, it, and basically, yeah. you're just asking Sorry. us to look into it at this point. Right. This I have point, a motion, yes. Commissioner Nettleton, and a second. So uh, if we did this program them? and I set money aside, I can never access that money? No, no. We're going to do it right now. I can never access, access it, it. If, if, if I did it myself. And I needed to access those funds. Okay. You, you're talking about a payroll them. deduction. Correct. Well, no. I mean, you can't access your United Way. But that's my property. Well, the United Property is okay. not my, not okay. my property. Okay. okay. These are property. This I is still my property. I think. Would you like me to render a legal? No, no. What I want, what I want. Let's do the study and then we'll have the argument. Yeah. Okay. okay. I want to take a vote. Are we okay with that? Take a vote. Yes. yes. It's yes. a first step. I think a vote's good. It's right? a good deal. Yeah. Y'all okay with it? <laughs> We're going to take a vote. <laughs> I vote yes. Yeah, let's please. take a vote. Before I say you vote one The motion is? The motion is uh, to look at the payroll deduction and see how many people would be interested in for HR to study and come back with a number. Yes. Have a, and the motion is by Commissioner Nettleton and second by Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Five zero vote. Thank you. I got, I got more heated than spending three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> All I'm trying to do is provide a damn benefit. We're over here spending money like it's water. It's like everything else. We'll argue twenty. We're at three hours on twenty five cents. We're gonna go to we're gonna go to thirty two so we can spend more money. <laughs> Item thirty two: setting aside funds for concrete at the Laughlin Road. This would this would provide we had. Uh, we had uh, Finished all the other parts I had visited with the, the city was supposed to go finish that part, but that's apparently not going to work out. So we're going to have to go do this. It's going to be about $20,000 to do the concrete entrance to finish out that road. All the rest of it's already done. I'll make a motion to set aside 20000 out of contingency. Second. You okay? Okay. have a motion, Commissioner Middleton. Second, Commissioner Wardlaw. All those in favor? Aye. 5-0 vote. Uh, 33, do we want to table that Commissioner Wardlaw after executive, or do you want to talk about it? What do you want to do? Uh, those are county roads that have never been named, and I'd like to make a motion to name them. I have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. Uh, we have any discussion on this? Um, just, you know, you're going to come up with names. I mean, it's not illegal anything, but y'all are going to come up with names, right? So we have names. We have names, right? Mm -hmm. Cemetery Association made a recommendation, and that's what you're sticking to. Right. Can we make that part of the minutes so that yes, the names are yes, official? Yes, let's enter that in the minutes. And these were already, uh, just for clarification, uh, all these were on our road log, have been on our road log. They've been on our road log since 2011, 2012, and they were on our road log since before that. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and we will abide the colors and all that. We'll make sure that we abide by any state laws. Any state laws. Uh, that was the only issue. That was the only issue was the okay. color of the signs, and that's been colored, covered, so everything else is fine. We have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. All right. Five zero vote. And you gave her a list. Yes, I gave her a list. This is long, right? <laughs>
Authorization to sign the, F- the fiscal year 2019-2020 closeout form, USM-6078. Yes. Yeah, this is the U.S. Marshals to close out the remaining unused funding. All invoices uh, have been paid in full. Yes, this is U.S. Marshal money. It, 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 it pays the overtime for the deputy to sign that. No, we didn't use it? Or? Yes. You said unused funds. It's unused funding. So, so it goes closed, where? It goes back to U.S. Marshals. Why didn't we use it? We didn't have enough overtime. The deputy didn't put in enough overtime to merit using all those funds. So, Sheriff, is it because you didn't have enough deputies? <laughs> so we're sending back... 4700 Okay. Okay. Uh, Jenny, you know, thank y'all for coming. We appreciate y'all taking time out of your day and, and actually sitting on the committee. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that question. Okay. Motion to approve. I had a motion from Commissioner Nelson. Commissioner Vasquez seconded it. All those in favor? Five zero vote. Uh, item 35, present 2019 racial profile report. Is a statute required to present the racial profile report to Commissioner's Court uh, prior to submission, which I believe the date is uh, March 1st. And a policy was attached to that also. We don't need to take action on that, just the presentation. Yes. It's just inclusion in the minutes. You're going to you're gonna give you a copy of the minutes? Uh, I'll give him my copy. If you don't mind that way, you don't have to hunt it later on. <clears throat> we got it? No. I can do it? Okay, we're going to move on to item 36. The Plain County Travel Card and Purchase Card for Purchasing Move. Agent. Second. That motion, Commissioner uh, Flores, second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5-0 vote. Item 37, approval for Robert E. County to advertise and conduct a live auction for surplus items located at 508 Reiner Street, Dario, Texas. Move. Have motion, Commissioner second. Nettleton, second, Commissioner Vasquez. So, well, real quick, this is all the stuff on Griner. Uh, we're going to save another $10,000 a year in rental. If part of that motion, if you don't mind, if we could get a letter... Uh, you'll authorize me to send them a letter that our last day will be February. February. Uh, I'll make my motion to authorize to terminate the, you to send a letter to terminate them. Commissioner Mike. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, how, how, how do you plan to hold that auction? Uh, uh, live, <laughs> live auction. Uh, they're going to, uh, Oscar's going to come in and they're going to do some lots, whatever they can separate in one day in lots, and they're going to auction it off. And then they're going to get rid of it. It's one of those deals that uh, we just need to get rid of it. We've got 30 minutes to get it out of there. Yeah, 30, well, or 25. <laughs> <laughs> item 38, declare the following items as surplus property for proper for proper disposition. Disposition may but not be limited to be auctioned, re- reassigned, recycled, and or destroyed. Oh, well, the so first two, uh, we had already done those. Okay. At a previous meeting, and we had set a um, limit. A limit of forty-five hundred on the. Uh-huh. I mean, a, a reserve. reserve. There mm-hmm. you go. It's a word I'm looking for. I know we'd done it at a meeting prior, but I'll, I'll make a motion to approve, but on items A and B to set a reserve of forty-five hundred. Okay. So I have, I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. Uh, item 39, authorization to purchase an AED uh, automated external def- defibrillator for the county library at a cost of $1,366 payable out of the library expansion. Wow. Mm-hmm. So good. Uh, motion, Commissioner Flores. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? All right. Yeah. 5 0 vote. Item 40, capital purchases capital purchase of a 20 <coughs> plus 5 foot with mega ramp gooseneck trailer by precinct 3 payable out of capital. Mm-hmm. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? All right. 5 0 vote. Item 41, approval for Wi Fi device, a hotspot for precinct 3 foreman. Mm-hmm. Second. Uh, I have a motion, Commissioner Nelson. Second, Commissioner Flores. This will come out of the maintenance. It will come out of our fund. Well, it comes out of, we have the uh, utility maintenance. Is that right, Matt? Yeah. yeah. Just for clarification. All those in favor? 
Five uh, zero vote. That's what we got. For the rest. Item forty two: authorization to purchase a computer for the district attorney's office for a, at a price of three thousand eight hundred and ninety six dollars and sixty five cents to be paid partly from computer refresh refresh program and partly from district attorney's office supply. Why are we? Well, a specialty computer and in previous meetings, yeah, okay. four to three that stay, we cover the first 1100. No, that's fine. I was just yeah. okay. motion to approve. Second. A motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? All right. All right. Five zero vote. Item 43 approval to purchase a replacement ice machine for fairgrounds for the estimated cost of $6,657 to be paid out of fairgrounds. Well, General what Department. kind of ice machine did you buy? Okay. That's six grand. There's it's a 1,000 pound commercial one. Commercial. It's oh, a good one. So it's the big, big one. Okay. And do we all yeah, because we just bought one last year and it was like $3,500. Yeah. Do we get to use that? Almost? I don't see why not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and the one that you have currently is crashed and burned, yeah. right? And it had, it's crashed and burned several times in the last yeah, it's eight years. When you yeah. say Fairgrounds General Fund, I assume that you're operating? Yes. 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 Yeah. Have a motion, Commissioner Flores. Second, Commissioner Middleton. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Five zero vote. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Item 40, 37. <laughs> 37. <laughs> Item 47 approved. Okay. He did good, right? Yeah. <laughs> approval Make motion to be approved, Judge. The gun back? Yes. Your quick second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second, so, Commissioner Vasquez. So I'll vote so. Whole packet of stuff. He did uh, because, well, we can talk about that later, but the most important thing is that we need to make sure the burn ban is on the mm -hmm. website. Plus, if we get it sent to the Texas a and Forestry Service mm -hmm. so they can put it on the map. Website, Forest Service. Got it. I just need a sign for a notice. That'll work. We'll get it. All right. Uh, I have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? All right. All right. Five zero vote. Item 48, approval to apply for a grant from the National Network of Libraries of Medicine for up to $1,329.22. This grant will help fund health related items for the library. Second. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? All right. All right. Five zero vote. Approval to accept the donation in the okay. No, yes, sir. Sorry, just now. Approval to accept the check donation in the amount of a thousand dollars from Linda Harwood Cali in the honor of Miss Toby Harwood on Monday, January 6, 2020. The grant committee approved and accepted the donation. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. <laughs> I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton and Commissioner Flores, and a second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Five zero vote. And that's going to be funny, but when I looked over at Cindy, she was making faces. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. She doesn't approve. Uh -huh. Renewal of maintenance and support for VLA. VM, VMware product production SNS Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> six essential plus kits at a cost of three thousand two hundred thirty seven dollars and ninety nine cents for three hosts and then a thousand seventy nine dollars and thirty three cents each that's just a breakdown yes. okay. <laughs> Jesus what are you do it? Besides, they have a lot of letters. You have a lot of letters, too, and then you break it down. Good morning. That's actually for the renewal of the maintenance support for VMware 6.5 for a period of one year. I remember that. Motion to approve. Second. Requesting it to be taken out of computer bank. Yeah, which is yours. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Aye. We're not here out there. like we don't know what that is. Thank you. Really sounded good. It did. <laughs> Item 51, author, authorization for county judge to sign the enrollment form for all county employees and elected officials for the state mandated cyber security course. Jesus. Motion to authorize the judge to sign. Second. A motion, Commissioner Nelton. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero votes. What's the deadline? Uh, the deadline will be, it started on January 14th, it ends June 14th. Okay. This will be every year. 
And it's going to be a 45 minute training, one time, log in, take the training, and then you get a certificate, and I'll get a report of who's done it and who has Can we log in at the house? I we think have right now they're going to work with Ram since we started doing this last April. Tech's going to reach out to Ram, get access to send the emails and the links to the employees. I've already sent everybody's email addresses to them. Um, but you need to know it requires all elected officials also. This is state mandated. So costing us anything other than the cost of the employees if they're going to pick No, sir. Uh, since TAC got the actual test that they have, we've been looking at it since April, um, approved by the state. So what we'll happens if we, what happens if we don't pass the test? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, <laughs> right now, probably will be locked out of the system. Come on. Uh, we get to take it a couple of times. <laughs> Perhaps somebody take it. Somebody else. Don't let me know. You'll <laughs> 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 send me a report and they'll probably tell me that you need to log back in. Oh, <laughs> Look at random. It's scary, it's it'll stop your access to it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We've been really good with this. Um, this has been a big it, issue. How long does it take to take this? <laughs> to take the course. course. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And, the whole course in 45 minutes? Yes. And it'll be every year. So, you know, you'll, you'll be... You know, with, with everything mandated. that's going on. Oh, I'm getting to that one. <laughs> <laughs> We're lucky to have one of them mandates. that looks at all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sir? Another one of them unfunded mandates. Yes. It's okay. Tell me. Oh, yeah. I got questions. Uh, uh, item 52, Human Resource Monthly Report from January 9th, 2020 through January 22nd, 2020. I'm just going to have a question. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second. 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 Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. 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 Second, Commissioner Flores, and they all comply. Yes, sir. <laughs> all in favor? All right. 5-0 right. right. vote. Item 53, closed session, call consultation pursuant to Texas Government Code A551.071, parenthesis 2, attorney client privilege, and we do have a couple Just items. Before we go to that, um, um, and this is as a favor, if we could go to Commissioner's comments, because Judge, uh, Judge Commissioner Vasquez is working on a project that in, involves the creek and Jack Lowe, and I know that Karen's working on a community uh, committee. That way she'll be here? Uh -huh, so you can hear. I can stay. I'll stay. Till the end? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yay, Karen. We're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go. Take a little break, body break. And then <coughs> going to. 11 and 10, 11, 12. Court will now come back into session. Are we ready, Cindy? I'm sorry. I'm sorry Court will now come back into session. It's 11, 12. We talked a lot in executive session, but no action was taken. And we talked a lot. No, no. <laughs> Item 54, Commissioner's comments. Commissioner Vasquez? Yeah. On the, uh, yeah. on the jump level? Yeah. Oh, Do you have uh, comments or something? Yeah. No, uh, we'll be taking a clo uh, closer look, man, I'm discussing uh, all the issues that are uh, happening there on jump low, right, on the uh, crash and so on. And I'll be meeting up with the city. Uh, got an email yesterday from the city, so I'll be meeting with Mr. Matt, hopefully tomorrow, and uh, walking through that whole area, especially on the uh, illegal dumping and the contamination of that uh Simply big uh, creek. Where it crosses, Where it crosses over on Jet Low, correct. And, and Commissioner, you had mentioned that you had observed some kind of behavior there that, that was. Uh, uh, yeah, correct. Uh, uh, we, we've seen it on Facebook, actually. They had posted it, I believe, Friday or Saturday. So, uh, uh, waited a couple of days. City had done, done nothing about it. So, uh, sent the crew out there on Monday morning, uh, picked up uh, a lot of trash, sofas, and a dead uh, cow. And uh, believe it or not, we picked it up, uh, dead cow, with our grapple truck. Uh, 30 minutes later, after we picked that one up, uh, another uh, Chevrolet pickup drove by there. We didn't get any license plates, but they dropped off another dead cow. Uh, real close by this uh, San Felipe uh, Creek, which all, you know, uh, does a lot of contamination to that creek. And then you see vehicles there? Right. A lot of the vehicles that we've been noticing stop actually in the uh, middle of the creek, uh, stop there. You know, first thing that runs off is engine grease, 
asbestos from the brake pads and so on. So it's getting, uh, I've noticed that, you know, it's getting contaminated. But that's something we'll be taking a closer look at. And that's how to do for it. That's on Jeffalo. On Jeffalo, okay. Correct. And did you say there was something, they were changing oil or something out there? Uh, well, we, uh, there was actually some signs of where they, uh, somebody had uh, changed oil, I guess, at home, but dropped, dropped off. Uh, it wasn't a complete two and a half gallon bucket, but it was like three quarters full had a, a used oil inside. So that's part of the contamination that's going on. And of course, that's on a daily basis. So I've got my crews out there helping out as much as we can to get, get that all cleaned up. And that's about it. But Karen, he keeps up with it on a regular basis. So. Okay. That's the person I talk to. Do you want to do a little bird washing over there? I do. Actually walk around the creek there. Karen's in charge of keeping the creek clean. I'm not. Does anybody else have any other comments? Commissioners? No, sir, no. Judges' comments, none. Had a good day. Meeting adjourned. Have a wonderful day. Yay.